Hey guys, I got some merch coming out for the seven year anniversary of the channel. I'll announce more in just a few days. Hey guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be taking another excerpt from Star Wars Archives by Paul Duncan episode 1 to 3. In the book, Paul Duncan had an interview with George Lucas throughout the whole thing and it's a massive book. Now one thing he's going to talk about is the Wills. And these are characters in the Clone Wars that not a lot of us know really anything about. They are these deity-like beings, these god-like beings, very spiritual, with many different faces, and they all kind of look somewhat similar, where they instruct Qui-Gon Jinn on how to become a Force ghost. Now, if it wasn't for Qui-Gon's adventures into the land of the Wills, or into learning about the Wills and learning from the Wills, he wouldn't have been able to pass on his teachings to Master Yoda, who passed on his teachings to Obi-Wan, who then passed on to Luke, and Anakin. So these wills are extremely interesting beings. Personally, in my opinion, I think there are three really interesting phenomenons or alien-like beings in Star Wars, and that is the wills, are the wills, the father, son, and daughter of Mortis, and the mother, if you want to include legends, and of course, the explanation of midichlorians. But today's explanation will come from George Lucas himself, and will be about the wills. George says, I was going to put more about the midichlorians and the wills after episode one. But everybody freaked out and said, we don't like this, it's terrible. So I didn't. Also, I had an investment in the whole thing financially, so I was forced to relent because I knew it was self-indulgent. But I was very keen to have it be in the movies. And if I had gone on to the last three, it would have all been explained there which would have been the sequel trilogy, of course. The Wills are a microscopic, single-celled life form like amoeba, fungi, and bacteria. There's something like 100,000 times more Wills than there are midichlorians, and there's about 10,000 times more midichlorians than there are human cells. The only microscopic entities that can go into the human cells are the midichlorians. They are born in the cells. The midichlorians provide the energy for human cells to split and create life. The wills are single-celled animals that feed on the force. The more of the force there is, the better off they are. So they have a very intense symbiotic relationship with the midichlorians, and the midichlorians effectively work for the wills. It is estimated that we have 100 trillion microbes in our body, and we are made up of about 90% bacteria and 10% human cells. So who is in service to whom? I know this is the kind of thing that the fans just go berserk over because they say, we want it to be mysterious and magical and you're just doing science. Well, this isn't science, says George. This is just as mythological as anything else in Star Wars. It sounds more scientific, but it's a fiction. It's saying there is a big symbiotic relationship to create life and to create the force, but if you look at all the life forms in the universe, most of them are one-celled organisms. I think of one-celled organisms as an advanced form of life because they've been able to travel through the universe. They have their own spaceships, those meteorites that we get to see every once in a while. They've been living on those things for thousands of years. They've been frozen, unfrozen, and can survive almost anything. The one-celled organisms have to have balance. You have to have good ones and bad ones, otherwise it would extinguish life. And if they go out of balance, the dark side takes over. The force is split into two, the positive light side and the negative dark side. The dark side is very greedy and possessive. Greedy people want everything, and when they get everything, they're insecure. So to be honest, this wasn't really the explanation that I was expecting when I was going to learn about the wills. Now the wills, of course, in the Clone Wars were these floating godlike beings with each having a different expression on their mask-like face. So I'm wondering if those guys were like the creators, essentially is what George is saying is that there weren't just the midichlorians, but there were also the wills, which kind of were even above the midichlorians from what I'm understanding. Personally, I don't really like this explanation and I'm really down with a lot of what George wants to add. I just think this is extremely confusing. It just takes me back to biology in high school and I just don't really like it. So. I'm glad he left it out of the film. I think midichlorians is kind of confusing enough or, you know, for most people, and I think it's sciencey enough, but I think adding the wills in there is just way too much. I just think it's rather kind of dull and just takes the whole mysticism out of it. I understand what George is trying to do by 
connecting everything and making everything seem like they're all interconnected in some sort of way leading to life. However, I think a non-answer or rather a mysterious answer sometimes would work better in this case because it just makes it a little more wondrous and magical. And I think that's one of the things about Yoda that makes him so special and interesting and unique is that no one knows anything about him. He just kind of comes and goes as he wishes and that's it. So that's also, you know, a danger with the Mandalorian and learning about Grogu and his people is that it could lead us to a place that kind of answers questions that while we want them to be answered, we also prefer them not to be because that is part of the excitement of Master Yoda is that we don't know anything about him. And I think that also applies to the Force itself. And I think that's why a lot of fans were pretty upset and taken aback by this whole midichlorian thing. And, <laughs> you know, the wills, this part, is to me just something that I don't really like myself. But hey, it's George's story, and if he wants it in there, then he's going to have it in there. So this is canon in my mind. And frankly, this is definitely canon, actually, because George created it. So my understanding with those creatures that we saw in the Clone Wars is that they were these single-celled animals themselves and that they fed on the Force. So the more of the Force that there was, the better off they are. So it makes sense that these would be the creatures or the beings that would have guided Qui-Gon Jinn into learning how to become immortal once his physical body perishes. It's rather quite interesting and it really does open your eyes as to who these beings were. As creepy looking and mysterious as they were, we now have more of an understanding of who exactly they are and how they are surviving and how they live. They're not so much gods, they're just more so these interesting beings that are single-celled animals feeding on the Force itself. I guess kind of like Nihilus, but you know, just with all the Force and not evil. They do both have mask-looking things though, so I'll say that. I kind of like the fact that George does hear the fans and listen to the fans. I don't like the fact that he conforms to them. I think, you know, his sentiments about this being a financial thing, of course, that if you were to put that into the film, it might tank the ratings and tank the movie and tank the whole franchise, so it kind of made him abstain from it. I can understand that, but at the same time, I don't think this is something that would make or break Star Wars, but I do think it would open up a lot of doors for scrutiny and for a lot of fans to be pretty angry. When it comes to Star Wars, angry fans are not a rare thing. But now that this information is out there, what do you think of George's thoughts on the wills? And do you wish that he had them explained in the sequel trilogy if he was going to make them, which was his original plan? I think if he had them explained as the beings in the Clone Wars, like these actual human looking beings, then people would maybe understand it a little better. But if he goes to like a cell, microscopic style of explaining things, I think maybe a lot of people might start to feel like this is high school biology and just maybe turn away and not really be too impressed. It's always interesting hearing George's thoughts and points of view on his own characters. So whether we like it or not, this is the way it is and this is how George wanted it to be. And that, of course, I respect. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Please let me know your thoughts about the wills and what George thought about them as well. Would you have rather seen them in the films or are you happy that they're left out and keeping the Force somewhat of a mystery. See you all in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, the Force will be with you always.